The film which you are about to see is an account of the multiple different nightmares that befell an explorer in Mexico. Originally from California, Scott Cassell was an army veteran who grew up diving at an early age. Even to the point that as a teenager, he was already working as an underwater welder. And by November 2006, he became the first person to film a giant squid in its natural environment. For over five years, Scott had been studying the giant man-eating squid, specifically the Humboldt squid. And along with his diving partner, Jackie Cozens, and a small diving crew was all traveling to the Gulf of California, which is located right here, to film a documentary for the first episode of a show called Dangerous Waters, which was scheduled to air on cable TV. The squid itself has approximately 1,200 sucker discs, each one lined with 20 to 26 needle sharp teeth, which allows the squid to attack its prey with more than 24,000 teeth at once. And nestled in its bed of eight muscular arms and feeding tentacles is a disproportionately large knife-edged beak, similar to that of a parrot's. The only thing is though, the squid itself can grow more than 14 feet in length and weighs more than 700 pounds on average, which make the local fishermen dub this ferocious beast Rojo Diablo, or the Red Devil. And after hearing stories of how people would experience the most horrible deaths after falling into the water with these giant squids, they would be pulled down and devoured in minutes. Scott decided not to take any chances and developed equipment and techniques to counter a possible encounter from one of these massive monsters. These precautions included, but weren't limited to, an anti-squid armor suit, armor plating for the vulnerable parts of his mixed gas rebreather, anti-squid cage, and to prevent any of the divers from being pulled down into the deep abyss, each person was connected to a steel cable that was also connected to the bolt at all times. As soon as they got to their destination in the Gulf of California, Scott, not wanting to endanger his crew, decided to scout the water alone at first, just to make sure everything was safe. As Scott was about to go over the side of the boat though, his Mexican guide touched his arm and stared into his eyes. He didn't say a word, but his face said it all. He thought to himself, Scott would die for sure. He believed the squid would eat him, armor and all. Scott would then give him a reassuring pat on the back, smiled, and continued to dive inside the water. As soon as he hit the water, he rolled onto his stomach and checked his rebreather's function. He then rolled upright and reached for his camera system. But as soon as his ears had made it above water, Scott started hearing the crew yelling to him, to right underneath you, look out. And a surge of excitement and unbelievable dread then filled Scott as he looked down past his fins. There, less than 10 feet away, at least 20 giant squid were lurking right beneath him. All ranging in length between five and six feet, they all just hovered nearby, staring at him, studying him. Then suddenly, about ten of the squid began to move in for a closer look. And as they got closer, they began to flash from white to pink to bright red, then back to white, all within a split second. It was absolutely beautiful, like looking at a creature from another world. Scott was just floating there, mesmerized. A large squid then moved in within two feet of him and flashed again. And because he was in such a deep trance, Scott didn't see that another giant squid had rushed in from his left side. Then BAM, it hit Scott with the force of its tentacles, like being hit in his ribs with a baseball bat. Then shocked by the power of the hit and unable to breathe because of the cramp in his chest, Scott turned to see what had hit him and immediately saw four more squid racing towards him. The first squid had came in so fast that he could barely track it with the camera that he had. Then out of nowhere, one of the squids struck the camera, which in turn struck Scott in the face. Then after five attacks of equal ferocity, the massive monsters decided he was unedible and decided to leave him alone from there on, and disappeared into the depths within seconds. And before he knew it, the whole ordeal only lasted less than one minute. And after hanging out for about 30 minutes, looking for any signs of their return, they then climbed back into the boat and later discovered bruises on his arm the size of oranges, as well as several scratches inside his squid armor suit. And of course, this would not be their only encounter. On the third day of the expedition, Scott was filming when a large squid came up behind him and was trying to chew on his neck. He immediately tried hitting it with the camera and weakening his grip in the process. And as he tried to fix himself, dropped his camera, though knowing that the sea bottom was always more than a thousand feet below him, he made sure to keep the camera system a pound positive buoyant so that if he ever dropped it, it would just float back up to the top, which luckily it did. Though before he lost the camera, the squid did drag him nearly 75 feet below the surface, 
And of course, as soon as the camera reached the top, everyone in the boat thought that he was a goner right then and there. Then as Scott's safety diver, Thad Hogan dove into the water to retrieve the camera. And miraculously, Scott popped back up right next to him, leaving everyone speechless. On the fourth day, as the team was filming, they noticed several five-foot squid appearing from the abyss and beginning to hover around Scott's diving partner, Jackie. And all were flashing colors and what they learned was pre-attack behavior. Scott could see Jackie readying herself for the impending attacks, when suddenly, out of nowhere, they all retreated into the darkness with blinding speed, leaving her with only one approaching, though this was no ordinary squid. The largest home block squid ever filmed was about 6 feet and weighed nearly 100 pounds. The massive squid closing in on Jackie though was huge. Coming in at nearly 7 feet, he almost seemed to move slower than the others. That was until Scott noticed his size merely made him look slower. He then raced to within 2 feet of Jackie before stopping cold right in front of her. The squid then studied the lure that Jackie was on. And as if he saw the monofilament line, the squid deliberately raised alongside it putting him directly in the same eye line as Jackie. Then the giant just swam there, almost staring into her soul. Not flashing for an attack, he just sat there for about four seconds and studied her. Horrified looking at this massive beast hovering over his friend's small body, Scott moved in closer to Jackie just in case he had to help or save her. Fortunately though, the giant squid just hovered there and studied her with no ill intent. Then slowly without really caring about Scott's approach, the squid flapped its huge fins and glided back down into the black abyss below. This would then be the last major event of the trip, and luckily no one was hurt too much in the search for adventure, at least this time around. Let me know in the comments what would you do if you were on vacation and you fell into the ocean and one of these behemoths crept up behind you and that was the last thing you saw. And once again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on notification bells for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.